Hello everybody, I am Revdi Shinde, working as an assistant professor in KTHM College Department of Biotechnology. Today we are going to start with such a topic which plays an important role in your recombinant DNA technology subject. In this subject, we have studied what are molecular markers. So today, we are going to study some of these molecular markers, the technique which is used as a molecular marker for studying the DNA or the sequence or a particular target DNA in this recombinant DNA technology. So today's topic deals with RFLP and RAPD. Before going to the topic, we need to study or we need to recall few things. What are that few things? We need to know first of all, what is recombinant DNA technology? As in our syllabus, we have studied all the techniques, each step step by step so we know what recombinant dna technology is here recombinant dna technology means what by our technique or by using an in vitro method we are going to ligate such dna or we are going to make such combinations which are naturally not possible okay so we are going to take a target dna then we'll add it into an host for getting multiple copies of that particular target DNA. So these steps combine together and this is called as recombinant DNA technology. Now the second most important thing you need to know is restriction digestion. Here the word restriction digestion means what? Cleaving or digesting such DNA which are of our interest. Now for digesting or cleaving such DNA, we need to use restriction enzymes which are called as molecular scissors. So this is what restriction digestion means. So in recombinant DNA, what do you do is you isolate the DNA first, then you cleave that DNA using restriction enzymes, and then you add it into a vector. Once you add it into a vector, you are going to transfer that vector into an E. coli or an host cell. Host cell will do what? It will do the uh, cloning or you can say it will uh, increase the number of copies of that target DNA which you have isolated and once that number of copies has been increased you can isolate that cells you can isolate the target DNAs and then you need to go for the molecular markers you need to select such target DNA where you have to isolate or you have to study only such sequence of the DNA which is beneficial for you either in medicine, in research, or many more applications. Now, here, the third most important thing you need to recall is need for such markers. As I just told you, there are various applications of recombinant DNA technology. Recombinant DNA technology can be used for making vaccines. They can be used to make GM crops. They can be used in medicine. They can be used to produce various types of hormones, various types of medicine and the best example is insulin right so for production of such hormones you need to recognize that particular sequence of the dna and to recognize that sequence you need to make the markers or you need to take the help of that markers which will let you know that what is the exact sequence of your wanted uh, protein so in this uh, unit or you can say in this topic the most important objective is that to learn these applications of RDT, right? Like where these molecular markers are going to be applied. Like what is the field where we are going to apply this technique. And second is the factors responsible. Like what all things you need for such markers to be used, okay? So in this markers, you will need, of course, DNA. You will need the uh, molecular tools, okay? So you need to know all the tools before studying this techniques like restriction enzyme, then uh, DNA, then plasmid, the host, everything. Okay. We'll start with what are molecular markers. Molecular markers is a molecule generally which consists within a sample taken from an organism. So they are also called as biological markers or some other matter. Here, why the term molecular marker is been assigned to uh, 
such techniques or you can say such ways which we are going to identify the DNA. Now here marker means what? Marker, when, whenever you use a marker, you make an identical mark on that paper, right? So here you are going to make an identical mark on the DNA. So for that reasons, when we are using DNA, it's called as molecular and marker means you are going to mark that DNA. So it's molecular marker. It can be used to reveal certain characteristics about the uh, respective source. As we just talked about, uh, recombinant DNA technology, this is an application, like applications of this technology is in vaccine, medical, agriculture, right? So here, you are going to mark the DNA. For what? For studying a particular character. Now that character is going to be on a particular sequence of the DNA. So you are going to mark that sequence and further going to study that sequence, right? So DNA, for example, is a molecular marker containing information about genetic disorders and the evolutionary history of life. Now we know that DNA molecule, right? We uh, get our DNA from our parents. Now there are few characters which are similar to our parents and there are also few characters in us which are not at all similar to our parents. So to identify such variations and of course the hereditary characters which we have got from our parents, to study these characters we need to study the molecular markers. Molecular markers can also be used to identify multiple different regions of chromosome that contain genes and that act together to produce the complex strain. Now, here, molecular markers in genetics, a molecular marker is a fragment of DNA. Now, what can you use as a marker? Of course, if you are, you are marking a DNA, you always need a probe. Okay. Now, what is a probe? Probe is a small segment of DNA. Okay. 4 to 5 base pairs of DNA is called as a probe. Now, that probe is known to us. We know each and every sequence of that probe. And we also know why that probe is going, means how that probe is going to be identifying a particular target sequence. Now that probe is actually a marker. Okay. So what is molecular marker? Molecular marker is a fragment of DNA that is associated with a certain location within the genome. Molecular marker are used in molecular biology and biotechnology to identify a particular sequence of DNA. We know molecular marker is going to use to mark your DNA and that molecular marker is going to be a probe. So probe will specifically go to that sequence of your DNA which is of our interest. Okay? Yes. So in this chart given below, you can uh, see there are different types of molecular markers, right? So there are biochemical molecular markers, there are nucleic acid molecular markers. Nucleic acid means particularly DNA and RNA based markers. We are going to focus on only DNA based markers, okay? So, in DNA based markers, again there are two types that is hybridization based markers and PCR based markers. Hybridization based markers where the probes are used, probes are allowed to hybridize the sequence, okay? And PCR based markers means for in that technique, in that uh, molecular technique which we are going to study in that PCR is one of the method which is used okay so today we are going to study two methods first is RFLP which is a completely hybridization method and second is RAPD which is a PCR based method now for your information in this course or in this molecular markers in this course we are going to study six different techniques. Today we are going to study RFLP which is restriction fragment length polymorphism and RAPD which is random amplified polymorphic DNA. In next few lectures we are going to study amplified fragment length polymorphism, variable number tandem repeats, oligonucleotide polymorphism and single nucleotide polymorphism. So these are the molecular techniques which you need to study. We'll move towards our technique, the first technique, which is hybridization-based technique, RFLP. 
the full form of RFLP is restriction fragment length polymorphism. You can see the full form, right? Restriction fragment. Here, your DNA is going to be your restriction fragment means what? Enzymes are coming up, right? Enzymes are coming and cleaving your DNA so that we can get the restriction fragment. Length polymorphism means what? Identifying the length of that fragmented DNA. So by this title only, you can understand the half of the process of this method. So in molecular biology, this method, it is a technique that exploits variation in homologous DNA. Now, here the term variation plays an important role. We know there are two types of things in our DNA, like heredity and variation, right? So heredity is that type of thing which we have, or that type of character which we have got it from our parents. But variation is something which is making us different from our parents, right? We don't look similar to our parents. Yes, we are somewhat similar, but we are not completely similar to our parents. So that is something different in us, which is making us different. So identifying such variations in two or more than two homologous DNA. Like suppose for an example, there is a child, okay, and the father of that child. We have to isolate the two DNAs. Which are the two DNAs? The father's DNA and the son's DNA. They are homologous DNA sequence, right? So DNA is going to be almost similar. There is somewhat difference in, in that DNA. So that is homologous DNA sequence. And the variation in that sequence is known as polymorphism. So in order to distinguish the individual population and species or to pinpoint the location of gene within a sequence. So for what we are using this technique? We are using this technique to identify the individuals for uh, letting know or for knowing the various types of population. As we know in animal species, today there are various or you can say distinct type of species, right? So the population, variation or you can say species diversity is different. In that species diversity, there is genetic diversity also, right? Species diversity has been distinguished into few more characters. And in genetic diversity, what is that genetic diversity? The species are distinguished by their genetic character. And what are the genetic characters? Of course, the DNA and the sequence. Right? So, this is where you can use this technique. For identifying the individual or population of that species, you can definitely use this technique. Restriction fragment length polymorphism is a technique which is invented by uh, English scientist Alex Jeffrey in 1984. And he developed this technique during the research into hereditary disease. So he was uh, doing research in hereditary disease and for making it more easier, he developed this technique. So the term uh, may refer to a polymorphic itself, right? So we know like polymorphism is what now? Studying the variation. The term actually tells us that this is a polymorphism technique. So, as detected through the differing locations of restriction enzyme sites or to a related laboratory technique by which such differences can be illustrated. Now, we know that restriction fragment, if this term is been studied, you can easily say that here the enzymes are used. What is the role of restriction enzymes? They are going to come and cleave the DNA, right? Yes. So here polymorphism can be studied, how it can be studied by cleaving the DNA at a different locations by restriction enzyme. Okay. So in this uh, RFLP analysis, a DNA sample is digested into fragments by one or more restriction enzymes and the resulting restriction fragments are then separated by gel electrophoresis. Now the gel electrophoresis, agarose gel electrophoresis is a method which we generally perform to separate the DNA as per their molecular size. So we have performed this technique and you can 
easily verify or you can easily visualize your DNA because they are going to be separated according to the molecular size. Now there are basically four steps of this technique. First step is DNA extraction. DNA extraction means what? Whatever the source you can take. If you have to study the variation in plants or genetic diversity in plants, you can take plant plant as a source. If you have to study the genetic variation in human beings, you can take blood, saliva as in sample. If you have to study it animals, if a particular uh, animal species, you can again go for hair, DNA, means uh, blood or any salivary sample. Okay. So we have to begin with DNA extraction. Second is DNA fragmentation. Fragmentation means what? We now want DNA fragments. We have a whole DNA. We have the whole chain of DNA. So in that full chain of DNA, we want small fragments. So how will we get the fragments? We need to cleave it with the restriction enzymes. So the purified DNA is digested using restriction endonuclease. We have studied many restriction enzymes. Uh, in that, there are endonucleases and exonucleases, right? You know the difference. Endonuclease is going to club, cleave the DNA in between, right? So, if there is a whole strand, it, it will cleave the DNA in between. So, for that reason, and we want that type of cleavage, so we are going to use restriction endonuclease. The recognition site of this enzyme are generally 4 to 5 base pairs in length. Now here, uh, there are few uh, three types of restriction endonucleases, like type 1, type 2, type 3. And the most efficient is type 2 because it identifies the palindromic sequence. And the most important thing, we don't want the palindromic sequence, of course, but we want the recognition site, uh, which is most nearest to the target DNA, right? So here we have to identify that target DNA. We have to identify such DNA which has a particular character on it okay so for that we want the recognition site which is going to be nearest one now here the cleavage is going to occur at every stage means if there is a somewhat similar strand it is going to cleave there right and the shorter the sequence recognize the greater the number of sequence of course so for example like if there is a short sequence of G A G C strand that can occur repeatedly in the sample of DNA. Now, just imagine there is a, a certain type of restriction enzyme which is cleaving this sequence, which is G A G C. Now, every time if that uh, enzyme gets the same sequence, it is going to cleave there, right? So, more smaller the sequence, we are going to get the more number of uh, fragments. If the sequence is bigger, if the sequence is uh, eight or ten base pairs. Of course, we are going to get the lesser fragments, right? So, as per the size of your uh, sequence or uh, short sequence, more number of fragments, larger sequence, lesser number of fragments. So, the restriction endonuclease that recognizes the GAGC sequence cuts the DNA at every repetition of the GAGC pattern. So, this is the role of restriction endonuclease, which is the second step of your technique now the third step is gel electrophoresis what is gel electrophoresis the enzyme now is going to be loaded or you can say the sample which you have uh, uh, cleaved using the enzymes right that sample that fragmented sample now you are going to load on the gel on the wells of the gel so the fragments are negatively charged. We know the DNA is negatively charged and can easily be uh, separated by electrophoresis method, which separates molecules based on their size and the charge. DNA is negatively charged, so we'll run the gel from negative to positive electrode. So it will run and of course it will get separate as per its molecular size. The fragmented DNA sample are placed in the chamber containing the electrophoretic gel and two electrodes. You have seen uh, the electrophoresis chamber and uh, there are two electrodes at the two ends. In between you have the gel and you have the buffer, right? 
so as the electrodes move of course the dna is also going to so when an uh, electric field is applied the fragments migrate towards the positive electrode and the smaller fragments move faster right they are uh, they have less charge or they are molecular size is very small so they will pass earlier and so they move forward and the larger one will be behind and thus the dna samples are separated into distinct bands on the cells and the fourth step is to visualize that band okay visualization how can you visualize you have uh, uv trans eliminator so you can visualize your dna under that uv trans eliminator you will get the fluorescent band on that gel there are visible bands on the gel. in this picture you can see there is an whole uh, method how the process is been gone okay so in this method you can see there is a plant right that plant you have extracted the dna from that plant and that dna you are cleaving that dna using restriction endonuclease okay so the first step is plant you you have to study the diversity of the plant suppose okay you'll take different plants you'll isolate the dna of the plants and you will cleave it into small fragments the third step is electrophoresis electrophoresis as uh, after the electrophoresis you can see the bands you can see the separation of the bands as per the molecular size you can see that under the picture right you have a and b samples so a sample is going to uh, tell you the dna fragments in the a plant and b one will tell you the dna fragments in the b plant and the first column which is the standard okay it it has the marker it has the molecular difference size dna by which you can compare the size of the dna by a and b now the fourth step is sudden blotting what is sudden blotting sudden blotting is a technique where you can transfer your dna which is on the gel gel dna is going to be transferred on a such a membrane which can sustain the dna or hold your dna in a very proper way okay gel can't hold the dna for much longer time so for that reason we are going to blot blotting means what transferring your dna from a gel membrane to an nitrocellulose membrane okay so your dna has been blotted on the nitrocellulose membrane and the fifth step is hybridization as i told you this method is an hybridization method okay that means what your probes are used as a molecular marker to hybridize or to identify the particular sequence or particular fragment of your dna so here you can see that you have a nitrocellulose membrane right and uh, there are many radioactive dna probes which are entering inside the gel okay now you have a nitrocellulose membrane in that you have all the three bands what are the three bands first is your a sample second is your b sample and of course the first line which you can see is the standard one right so probes will go and attach to only that type of strands or only that type of bands which are specific to it right we know the sequence of the probe we know what is the sequence of the probe and of course what is the character of that sequence so they will go and identify the uh, complementary strand of, of that probe now the one thing you need to remember is if we are studying uh, or if we are isolating a particular type of protein just take an example of you want the insulin okay you have produced the insulin or you know uh, now if you are talking about plants you know that there is an a uh, pigment in the chlorophyll pigment in the plants right so if we are extracting that uh, pigment you need to know that if there is a pigment which there is a character in that dna of the plant which is going to produce the pigment right so you are going to isolate that dna you are going to cleave that dna do the electrophoresis do the blotting and now you have the probe which is going to go and attach to the specific 
band or specific sequence which is for the pigment okay so probes doesn't entertain any other dna strands it goes and specifically attached to only that sequence which are complementary to the probes okay so here this specific dna or you can say identification of specific dna is the most important thing and that is what probes does sixth is washing now here why washing is important you know that on electrophoresis membrane or you can say on the nitrocellulose membrane you have whole dna bands right on that you have added the probes the specific probes has attached the specific sequence of the dna now you have to erase or you can say wash all other types of probes which are uh, not linked or you can say half linked to the other bands okay so for that you need to wash it very properly and then you can visualize your nitrocellulose membrane under uh, x-ray film or you can say uh, you can observe it under the uv trans eliminator or you can go for staining also now exposure to uv film or you can say x-ray film here what are you going to observe you are going to observe only two bands the two bands of what two bands of first is a and the second is b okay so what are the two bands that two bands are of the probes which is specific okay so that probe has gone to that band of the dna and has attached there so it has marked the sequence it has marked the band okay and the band pattern on x ray film can be visualized and that visualized band can be recognized it can be sequenced further and you can know exactly what is the sequence of that particular band and then you can know what is the particular character which is present in that band okay so by this way you can study the species diversity you can study the numerous different types of distinct species on this earth here we have studied the whole technique but what is the application of this technique we were uh, in between saying that this can be used for species diversity this can be used for uh, many more other purposes but of course this can be used to determine the status of genetically disordered people or you can say uh, the disorders which are genetically present in the human beings or in many uh, animals too that can be studied so you know genetically dis genetic disorder is a most important uh, method or you can say it's a most important thing nowadays because this techniques need to be treated otherwise the uh, percentage of carrying that disease is going to be increased right so the proper precautions or proper care should be taken when you have a genetic disorder let it be an recessive let it be an a uh, dominant one okay you can always be a carrier so identify identifying such things or such disorders is one of the application of this technique second is to confirm the source of a dna sample such as in matter uh, paternity test or criminal investigation of course like if there is an a uh, case criminal case okay in a particular criminal uh, situation you can see or uh, there is a blood samples you have taken that blood samples you can identify that blood samples only you have a certain victim and if you have to uh, study that the dna of that victim you have to collect the blood of the victim and then you can cross check right whether the on the case or you can say on the murder murder site or on the site of the uh, case does that person was there or not okay so for that reason for criminal investigations for criminal cases to be identified uh, this technique can be in genetic mapping to determine recombination rates that show the genetic distance between of course as we have now said that this technique is for studying the variation in two homologous dna so of course for genetic mapping this can be used to identify a carrier of a disease causing mutation in a family yes if a, a genetic disorder can be studied 
a mutation can also be started and of course if that person is a carrier or that person is a person who is actually going through that mutation that can also be started and what can be the frequency for taking that mutation further that can also be started now moving towards the disadvantages of rflp okay we know that there are various advantages of this as we have studied the application so there are various advantages but always when there is an advantage there is also a disadvantage so what are the disadvantages this technique has been widely used in genome analysis but uh, of course there is an uh, thing which can be uh, like it can be not that specific if different types of probes are used it is going to interfere in different types of dna or the sequence of the dna if suppose there are more similar repetitive dna sequence in that dna okay if suppose nucleotides of that dna is more similar or more repetitive then this technique cannot be used because uh, the probes which we are going to use are going to be identified or specific for a particular sequence but if whole sequence is similar of course it is not of any use then it has become almost absolute with the advent of relatively simple and less expensive dna polymorphism technology then pc yes pcr uh, is a most easy or uh, more easy to handle type of technique right so here in this technique in each step we are going we are manually doing such thing which is really really very difficult so for that means for such thing we can go for automation right rather than doing it uh, by manually or in in vitro way we can go for automation things automation machine which are now available and so we can do this method by lesser time and of course the ex, uh, expense or you can say the cost which we are paying for now for doing this technique can also be uh, cheaper additionally rflp requires a large dna sample and the isolation of which can be a laborious and time consuming process as i just told you uh, by using automated machines we can um, less the time of this technique right we can reduce the time of this technique and of course the dna sample which we use for this technique is of large length or the quantity is really more so which is nowadays not available or you can say that such quantity is not easy to handle so for that reasons this is one of the disadvantage and in contrast pcr can amplify minute amount of dna in a matter of hours so of course pcr is an very easier way to do this technique now the second method will move to our second method which is rapd it is one of the pcr based technique the rflp method which we just studied was an hybridization based technique which will take more time which is more expensive which is more time consuming uh, which is like a sample needed for that technique is large in quantity right and of course that is not automated but here our rapd method is an pcr based technique which will reduce your time which will be more efficient it will be uh, more easier to do okay and very handy to be so rapd that is defined by differences between individual in terms of dna regions either been or not been amplified in a pcr primed by random oligonucleotide sequence this technique is generally been defined for what for identifying the differences uh, between two individuals or the dna of that two individuals of course in every technique we are going to study the same thing but here pcr is been used so this is a type of pcr reaction but the sequence of dna uh, that are amplified are random the uh, method or the technique defined is as per that it is an random amplification it is not an a uh, specific amplification it is a random amplification means the uh, dna is going to be cleaved randomly it is going to be amplified randomly 
there is no such specifications in this technique. RAPD creates several arbitrary short primers, then proceeds with the PCR using a large template of genomic DNA. So it starts with what? It starts with small primer, okay, and uh, it proceeds for the PCR. Now RAPD, what is the full form of RAPD? It's random amplified polymorph. So your randomly amplified polymorphic DNA. Randomly amplified. Amplified using PCR. Okay. Or PCR is also called as a thermocycle. RAPD is a lab technique used to amplify unknown DNA fragments. So your unknown DNA fragments is going to be amplified using DNA fragments. Remember one thing that PCR method is used in this technique and the second most important thing is your random amplification can be done. There are three steps of this technique. First is of course DNA extraction. You have to take a particular source, extract it and then amplification by random primers. In second step you have to go for PCR. You have to take the whole DNA. You have to take a while first of all. Add your uh, DNA sample into it, add the restriction enzymes into it, add the uh, other primers into it, the forward primer and the reverse primer, reverse primer as we have started in PCR method, right? And then you have to go for PCR. You have to start the cycles of the PCR. Go for 40 to 45 cycles. Once the PR, PCR has been stopped, you can go for electrophoresis and visualize the DNA. These are the three basic steps of the uh, RAPD method. Here the most important step is PCR based steps. Yes. And then you can go for electrophoresis. Now here in this picture you can see like you have taken a microbial sample which is collected from the polluted sites. Okay. Like polluted sites uh, have different samples, microbial samples or microorganisms. In it. And you have to take that samples you have two samples sample a and sample b right as you can see in the picture and you have the sequence you have the whole dna and that dna has been randomly amplified it has been put into the pcr with the primers with the uh, enzymes okay and you can see in the picture you have a uh, fragment of that particular dna once the fragments has been done okay you have fragments, they have been amplified. So you have same type of DNA again and again. Just remember, it is random. There is no specification, specific fragments. They are random fragments. And you can electrophoresis it. You can see there is a ladder, right? So you have a, a electrophoresis chamber. You have a ladder. Then you have sample 1, sample 2. In that sample 1, you can see sample A and B. There you have written, like we have written the monomorphic band and polymorphic band. What are this? Polymorphic band are uh, like they have the different molecular size. Or uh, you can see the ladder and compare your samples by that ladder. In A and B, the first ladder, okay, you can see the first ladder. In that first ladder, the ladder first band, A first band and B first band are almost similar so that is a monomorphic band means what they are similar but in uh, the polymorphic bands which marked which are marked okay they are not in a similar line with the ladder means what the molecular size of that polymorphic bands are different so that is what we have to identify so this makes it different like in a band you can see there are five bands in a sample you can see there are five bands which are similar to the ladder only one bands among it is not similar that means what this is the minute variation in between the ladder and the sample a. okay same as that you can also find the variation in other few samples too by uh, taking such a experiment and of course comparing it with the ladder now the main advantages of this method is what 
it includes suitability for work on anonymous genomes okay capability of prob to problem uh, where and limited quantities of dna are available yes like it is very efficient it is very low expensive it is uh, less time consuming uh, it needs small amount of sample even if there is a small amount of sample it can be this technique can be carried out so there is no such problem that this much amount of or a particular quantity of product or dna is needed high number of fragments are formed and it is a simple technique it is very simple technique you just have to add the samples into the here is going to do its work right so you don't have to look at it uh, at every step so visualization is most important thing in this technique now uh, after knowing the advantages of RAPD, we need to make a comparative chart. Okay. What are the comparative? Like here you can see the first most important difference between the RAPD and RFLP is RAPD is an PCR based technique and RFLP is an hybridization based. So here uh, RAPD involves in the amplification of genetic markers, whereas uh, RFLP involved in the restriction digestion okay. then RAPD in RAPD technique small quantity of DNA can be because this technique is a random amplification whereas in RFLP you need a larger amount of DNA in RAPD random primers using random primers can be specific or you can say it can be used but in rflp the different species specific probes are used just remember the difference between primers and probes in rapd primers are used in rflp probes are used probes are used when hybridization is done in rflp we are doing hybridization and in rapd which is a pcr based method we are going to use primers then again, other you know that RAPD is a less uh, reliable method. It can be uh, done very easily. It is uh, not that much costly. It is not that much time consuming. Whereas RFLP is a slow process method. It is more reliable method, of course. It can detect one to three loci. Okay. It can detect, it has more applications, of course. But it, uh, it is more time consuming and it is of course very costly method so when we are going for such methods we need to know like uh, what is going to be benefited at by every point of view we have to think that and then we have to go for the method yes so by this differences we can generally identify or we can know which method to be used right either we have to go for rapd or we have to go for rflp both the methods are useful of course but uh, as per your application you can determine which method to be used now we have studied two techniques which is rflp and rapd the assignment you have to do after this lecture is that you have to elaborate the applications of rflp not only you have to write it just point wise you have to elaborate like what else you can do i have told you we can go for identifying the genetic disorders we can go for identifying genetic mutations we can uh, of course go for identifying the variations in the uh, different species species diversity can be studied right so such applications you have to write or elaborate in such a way like how can we perform it? what exactly sample to be taken okay so you have to elaborate on applications and comment on rapd technique comment on like write what you felt about this technique and how you can do this technique and for what thing you can do this technique we have studied three important points first point is molecular marker we studied what is molecular markers then we studied the whole technique the applications and disadvantages of rflp which is restriction fragment length polymorphism and then we moved forward with the next technique, which is the PCR best technique, which is random amplified polymorphic DNA. 
Yes. So these techniques are molecular techniques which are uh, known to be the molecular marker techniques which are going to mark something very important in your sequence and these techniques are majorly used in research in next lecture we are going to study such two more techniques which is amplified fragment length polymorphism aflp and vntp that is a variable number tandem repeat these both are also a molecular marker techniques and we are going to study it in our next lecture thank you